Today, I want to show you what different types of writing you could include in your All About book. So you've already brainstormed ideas of topics that you could write about, as well as the chapters that you could have in there. But each of those different chapters could be a different type of writing. So let's explore some of those different types of writing um, and text features that you can put into your writing, to your All About book. So the first type of writing that you could include would be the one we actually talked about at the very beginning of um, this unit was narrative versus informational writing. You can have a narrative in your informational writing. What? What I mean by that is you can tell a story um, of an experience that you've had all about um, in your all about book. So a story. The only thing is, it's not going to be just a make-believe story where aliens and, and spaceships and monsters and time travel and all that kind of stuff comes into play. This story would have to be something that teaches um, the reader something. So in my book about hedgehogs, I told a story about my hedgehog anointing himself. So I was teaching the reader what anointing means and telling the story. So let's read that story, page five. So it starts on page five, it ends on page seven. So how many pages is that? Page five, page six, and page seven. It's gonna be three pages. Anointing. Hedgehogs do a strange and unique thing called anointing. My hedgehog named Guido did that a lot. The first time he did it, I was disgusted. So I haven't told you what it is yet, but I'm giving you the background. I did have a hedgehog, his name is Guido, and this is his story. They do it when they smell a strong smell. I was wearing perfume, so my hedgehog started licking my wrist where I had sprayed my perfume. Then he turned it into a foam in his mouth and spit it all over his body. Guys, this is true. This is really something weird that hedgehogs do. And so then you can see I drew a picture of him spitting that foam all over his body. That's what anointing is. Luckily, that was a delicious smell, but they do it with nasty smells too. He once did it with a dead cricket. That didn't smell too good. Yuck. So see, instead of just telling you anointing is when a hedgehog licks a strong smell, turns it into like a, a foam in their mouth and then spits it all over their body. Instead of just saying that, I explained it to you in a story showing you that I actually know about this because it's happened in my life. So that is one thing that you can do um, is a narrative story. The next type of writing you might choose to include um, would be a list. So you could make a list, a bulleted list. You'd want to have bullet points on there. Um, here's an example of one a student did when they were writing about healthy eating. So on this page, they have a list of where to go to get healthy foods. And so they just made a list that they numbered. One, you could go to Target. Two, Walmart. Three, you could get healthy food at school. Four, Kmart. Five, dollar store. So they made a list that they numbered. You don't have to number it. You could have bullet points, like I said. Um, one I did about cheerleading. Things to practice before tryouts is a list. So I did, I did number mine as well. You need to practice your jumps and here are some jumps. You need to do gymnastics, here are some gymnastics. So I made lists of the different things that you should practice. So that's another type of writing that you could include. Okay, next idea, you could write a how to how to do something. If you do a how-to, you really should have it um, very nicely organized with boxes, which you would have to draw inside your book since we're using the um, staple books. But let me show you examples of how-tos. So here's one I had already shown you in another video, how to draw a unicorn. So they have a box with lines beside it. That's what I'm saying you might wanna draw uh, you could divide your page in half, but we'll talk about that another time. So step one, draw the face. Two, two, draw the ears and the horn. And they just keep going step by step to show you how to draw something. But it doesn't have to just be with drawing. In my dog book that I also already showed you, I did a how-to in here showing you how to feed a dog. 
buy dog food, clean the dog bowls, give him a scoop of food, give him fresh water. So again, those are numbers showing you step by step how to do something. So that is another type of writing you could include. Next one we're going to talk about is a timeline. So number four is a timeline. We haven't talked a lot about timelines. So let me show you what that would look like. A timeline is going to literally be a line that you draw. This is the one about pandas. It's kind of hard to read because it didn't copy well, but it's a line you draw where you put different points on the lines to show the times that things happen in a sequence, in, a, in an order. So this one, let me see if I can zoom in a little for you shows that um, it's four to eight weeks old when a panda opens its eyes. And that four weeks old, it's when a panda gets its fur. So four to eight and four weeks, those might be kind of close to be around the same time, but they put them in a different or in a different spot. When a panda starts walking is 12 weeks. So now we're going from four to 12. When a panda starts eating bamboo is 24 weeks. So see how we're going in an order where it's getting older. And then when a panda leaves, his or her mom is 72 weeks old. So it's going in order of when things happened. Another example of a timeline, I made one for cheerleading. So this was my cheerleading experience. I was 15 years old and I was cheerleading at Blackhawk Middle School at eighth grade. 16 years old, I was a Snyder freshman fall winter and competition cheerleader. 17 years old, Snyder varsity. So I made a timeline of um, when I, how old I was and what I was cheering for, but see how it still goes in order from starts to the youngest and goes to the oldest. So you can include a timeline if it makes sense to your topic. I don't think I could do a timeline for laundry, but I could do a timeline for something about dogs. Next up, number five is going to be a diagram. And if you remember, a diagram is a labeled picture. So not just one label. If it's just one label, that would just be a picture with a label. I'm talking about where there's lots of things labeled. So for cheerleading, I did do a labeled diagram here where I talked about what you would wear for your uniform, what you would need for your uniform. So part of our uniform was a bow. We had a bodysuit on underneath our, our um, cheerleading uniform so that our necks and our arms were covered. The uniform top and then the skirt we had pom-poms bloomers they look like underwear but they weren't they were something to put over the bot like under the skirt so that if you did like a kick nobody would see your underwear then we had a megaphone you had to have specific cheerleading socks and shoes we used converse shoes and we also had a warm-up suit which i didn't do very fancy i probably could have done better with that but i did take a lot of time on my drawing to make it look fancy and my labels so you can include a diagram if it makes sense to your story. All right, the last one I'm gonna put on here is an information paragraph. Informational, but I'll put information paragraph. So we know a paragraph would be like three to five sentences with an indent on there. I have an information paragraph in my book about hedgehogs where I'm talking about hibernation. So as you can see, I started with an indent and this is where it's not any of the other things. It's not a story. It's not a list of how to a timeline or a diagram. I'm just literally going to tell you information. So hibernation. In the wild, hedgehogs hibernate. That means they sleep through the cold winter. Pet hedgehogs should not hibernate. If they do, they could die. They may try to hibernate if their cage gets too cold. It is important to keep your hedgehog's cage in a warm spot and possibly add a heating pad under their cage. So that, like I said, is not a story, although I did have to do this. This is how I knew. And I put the picture, I bought a lizard cage heating pad you plug in. That's what I put under my hedgehog's cage. But that was just a, a picture with a caption so you knew what that was. But the rest of this is just information. So those are all the different types of writing that you could include in your story. You're not going to do this today. Today was just a learning kind of think about it day. But I, um, you will be picking more than one of these because if you read an informational book, every single one was a list, a list, 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 list. It'd be a boring book. Or if it was five how-tos in one book, it might be kind of boring. So having a good mixture of these different types of writing will make your um, 
your all about book much, much more interesting. So this is what we will do next time we write. We will pick our topic and pick what type of writing we're going to do for each of our chapters. So for now, that's the end of writing. Go ahead and move on to your next lesson. See you later.